Hi, this is Paula Glory, and this show is called Farther Down the Rabbit Hole because we like to go into topics more deeply. Today we're going to go into the topic more deeply of the grand jury and the topic of public access. So today I have a special guest, and that's Gerard. He's going to tell us about the grand jury. And Gerard, you're with uh, Public Access Producers. So, Rao, why don't you start with you? Your, your show is Bollywood to Hollywood. Yes, uh, my show is uh, Bollywood to Hollywood with uh, Rao Rampilla. Uh, recently, I had the uh, uh, producer and writer of The Simpsons on my show. Uh, it had three episodes. Uh, it was fun. It yeah. was very creative. It's going to be wonderful. And I'm going to, we'll edit that into this show Thank you. in post production. And we'll talk about it with the grand jury because Rao's going to be bringing a problem up with uh, having this great guest, and that's publicity. But let's put that on reserve until you learn a little more about the grand jury. Sure. And uh, Josh Walensky, can you tell us about your show? Yes. Yes. I have a show every Monday night, 9.30. And uh, I always have various aspects and people from the community. I think this coming few weeks I'm going to have an opera, a metropolitan opera coach in the language of French, which will be very interesting. He's going to really get a voulez vous in order and so on. But, you know, I go everywhere from tenants' rights to environmental issues, to climate warming. I love this show I had with uh, Ken Nash on hydrofracking, against hydrofracking, and also discussing climate change. And I keep going on and on. Wonderful. And my dear husband, Joe, tell us about your show. Well, my show's Pot Talk TV, and it tells you how to get in trouble and then how to get out of it again. <laughs> <laughs> Pot Talk with Joe Barton is the name. Pot Talk with Joe Barton. And it's, right. and what time? 9.30 Saturday. 9.30. He forgets because he's... 10.30 on Saturday <laughs> night. It's most too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're shooting for five days a week. That's our hope because, right, we have so much... Yeah, we hope because we have so much material. You want to introduce Gerard? Why you're I love Gerard. <laughs> Gerard's doing the, the righteous work of the... Uh, trying to get a uh, constitutionally protected uh, common law grand juries and I would actually like Gerard to tell because he's he has more information on it than anybody I know and uh, so Gerard what's happened since Joe and I went around with you last uh, last week really well, it was last week we, we got on the car what's and the happened next day is probably the calm before the storm but what we did was we uh, we faxed out a, a memorandum to all the counties, you know, um, and we, and we did that one other time before, and we felt that we needed to do that because when we found out that the judge had sent an order to each county to tell them to refuse us admittance into the court, we felt that that needed to be addressed and 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 by the people, and so <clears throat> we sent them a fax, you know, to that effect, and we and and we warned. The clerks that listen when you pull these papers that we put in and I mean we you know we got responses back that you know that talk like we were asking to come in and that it was absolutely not the case what we were doing is we were giving them the papers announcing that we were here we wanted that those papers filed in the record to be recorded that the, that we had gone through a process a common law process albeit that the, that the grand jury has instituted themselves ri rising out of the people in this county, and that's the job of that clerk, to file those public right. records, which they pull out. Right. So let me just slow you down a little for viewers, mm -hmm. because I know what Gerard is saying is, by asking, you're going into a jurisdiction where you're agreeing that you will accept whatever the decision is of what you're asking. So that's why it's important. It's not that Gerard's not a polite person. Right. Well, you know, it was. It seemed that they were trying to trick us into filing a, a docket number in a court to suck us into the court. We weren't asking the courts anything. In other words, we're not, this battle 
was not to be fought in the court. We've been in the courts for four years. Why would we go back in there? We can't get justice there. We can't get justice because they don't listen to the people and they and 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 you could have a knife sticking out of your chest and they say no cause of action. <laughs> and and ultimately that's what goes on. This is you know, they created this monster. It was here and our forefathers gave it to us and we happened to stumble upon it and and, and rise it back up. And it, and all the words are there. There's no question about it. So now it's coming, and they're trying to stop it any way they can. Could I get you to read? You guys answered them. We did a show last last right. week on what was leading up to it. Um, could you read your answer? Could, could well, we? I think I think before we read the answer, we should we should read some of which made that answer, which was this memorandum that was sent around. Could, could I read that? Yes, you can. I, I so love this that is memorandum. this is the memorandum that we weren't supposed to have because it was okay. an internal court document and 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 behind this is some of the responses before we ever saw this we started to get this and actually you should read that first this okay. is this is the kind of stuff that came back out of the out of the uh, clerks the, the okay. uh, county clerks and the court clerks okay this is september 27th so that's before i came around this is Kevin Malloy, uh, 1003 Congress Street, Apartment 2, Front, uh, Schenectady, New jury. York. What's mm -hmm. that? He's just somebody in the grand jury movement that filed okay. paperwork. I see. Okay. Dear Mr. Malloy, your correspondence dated September 20th, 2013 was received in this office on September 23rd, 2013. Please be advised that Chief Administrative Judge A. Gail Prudenti has authorized me to notify you of her instruction to all court clerks and county clerks acting in their capacities as clerks of the court to reject requests to file documents that attempt to establish common law grand juries. Your paperwork is being returned herewith. Should you have any questions, you may direct them to New York State Unified Court System Office of Counsel, so you've got the bar there, 25 Beaver Street, New York, New York, 10004, military jurisdiction, and a very truly yours, Robin Farmer, Chief Clerk, Schenectady County Supreme and County Courts, and CC Schenectady County District Court, New York State Attorney General's Office. Now what pops out to me right here is the judge is not saying, signing an order saying this is wrong because that would be fraud. Mm -hmm. What she's doing is she's, she's having somebody else pass this on, hoping you won't notice. But under right? her direction. And but that, under that paper is important evidence. Oh, because so it's still powerful? Even it's very she... powerful because what it does is it says, I'm doing this because she told me to, and I'm illegally taking your papers out of the public record. Because which she is, told me to. Because she told me to. And okay. just like we know in Nuremberg, following right. orders doesn't right. cut it. Okay, so even though you don't have the judge's signature saying you can't have a grand jury, right. my order, no grand jury, right. that's still powerful. Okay, here's the memorandum we got. And I kind of felt that who handed it to us, uh, it, it was so obvious that uh, she had been prepared for everybody coming because as soon as someone started talking, she never even asked, why are you coming or whatever. Well, they knew we were coming. Yeah. And, and, and this is the, the one we weren't supposed to get. Right. And they Here's gave the one to that wasn't supposed to be in our hands. This is, uh, the title is State of New York Unified Court System, 25 Beaver Street, New York, New York, 10004. And this is A. Gail Prudenti, Chief Administrative Judge, and on the other side, John W. McConnell, Counsel. Memorandum, September 26, 2. Honorable Fern A. Fisher and Honorable Michael V. Kukoma from John W. McConnell and Paul McDonald. Subject, common law grand juries. You know, they always hide behind their attorneys and it's just like, you know, executives hide I mean, behind the judges. secretaries. These are judges. They should know the law. Yeah. In the past week, several county and court clerks have received documents for filing that purport to establish a common law grand jury in their county. Media outlets have reported that th these attempts at filing are part of an organized effort supported by a group calling itself the National Liberty Alliance, which hopes to create local grand juries with subpoena power to investigate alleged criminals and politicians on the suspicion a law has been violated and with no authorization from the judicial system. 
end quote. Well, that's what's supposed to be, a separate, a separate arm. That. It's not supposed to have Imagine authorization that. from judicial system. Okay, I'm sorry, I can't help commenting, but I'll try to restrain myself. You have asked for our views on this, on this practice. We are aware of no constitutional or statutory authorization for a citizen-initiated common law grand jury in New York. Although a New York state grand jury derives its authority in part from the state constitution, the common law was only continued in New York subject, in quotes, to such alterations as the legislature shall make. New York Constitution, Article 1, Section 14. I know you addressed that in our last show, but I'll wait until the end and you can address it again systematically. With the advent of the Code of Criminal Procedure and subsequent criminal procedure law, the legislature manifested a clear intent to supplant whatever common law powers the grand jury may have possessed. See Wood v. Hughes, 9 NY 2D, 14, 1961. Further, state law provides that a grand jury is impaneled by a superior court, constitutes a part of such court, and is to be drawn and impaneled for such terms as established by the chief administrative judge in consultation and agreement with the presiding justice of the appropriate appellate division. See CPL 190.05, 190.10, See also 28 NYCRR 128.17 and 200.13. You know, using all these numbers Stat to kind statutes. of hide the fact that statutes. this is... Yeah, you know, going... Anyway. Accordingly, there is no authority for a state grand jury to be formed outside the auspices of the court. Shall I read the footnote right here or, or no? It says, the document these groups have submitted for filing claim that the U.S. Supreme Court recognized the right to establish a common law grand jury when it stated that a federal grand jury is an institution separate from the courts over which the district court has limited supervisory control. See United States versus William 504 U.S. 36 at 47 to 49, 1992. The Williams case, however, does, did not decide any state constitutional law question. <laughs> Moreover, Williams did not undermine the supervisory role that the district court maintains over the impaneling process of a federal grand jury or create a right of citizens to impanel their own federal grand jury. CCFRCP Rule 6A. When the public interest requires, the court must order that one or more grand juries be summoned See also 28 U.S.C. 1863A. Each, quote, each United States District Court shall devise and place into operation a written plan for random selection of grand and petite jurors, end quote. Okay, so now go on with the letter. That was a footnote. We also find no law authorizing the filing of a document that purports to establish a grand jury in violation of Article 190 of the Criminal Procedure Law. Such documents are not filed in connection with any judicial proceeding, do not come within the filing requirements of New York's criminal or civil practice rules, and wrongly usurp the judiciary's authority to draw and impanel a grand jury. Having been informed of these attempted filings, Chief Administrative Judge A. Gail Prudenti has authorized us to notify you of her instruction to all court clerks and to county clerks acting in their capacity as clerks of the court to reject requests to file documents that attempt to establish such common law grand juries. She has further directed that clerks notify the lo local district attorney and the attorney general's office for, of the filing attempt. Ooh. Mm. Please distribute this memorandum and Judge Prudenti's directive to all court officers, including the county clerks, acting as clerks of the court to whom it may apply. Any questions regarding this matter should be referred to Paul McDonald in counsel's office at 212-428-2150. For those of you with your pen and paper, 212-428-2150. Call Paul McDonald and ask him what the hell is going on here. Thank you for your assistance. And this was not signed by anybody, but CC'd 
Honorable A. Gail Prudenti, Ronald Yonkins, Administrative Judges, Maria Logos, Esquire, Maria Barrington, County Clerks, all of them, District Executives, New York City Chief Clerks. So, I mean, wow. We got their attention. Wow. So, it, was that scary? I mean, did, you know, John thought charges might be put on you. Well, they did, you know, if they can, they will. You know what I mean? They, they, they want to get you for impersonating their, their, uh, their temple, so to speak. You right, know what I mean? Right. But, so, you, but you answered that, right? Yes, we did, and we did it point by point. And I think you read it last time, the, the uh, memorandum that we sent out, which I don't know if I brought a copy. I believe that. There was one that sounded like the Declaration of Independence. Right. It was beautiful. I read, I started, I almost got through all 10 pages on, on Woodstock Public Access, but unfortunately uh, we had to cut out for pre-recorded programming. And I noticed that your final one was seven pages, so you probably tightened it up. Right. Well, I mean, we, it was beautiful, the ten okay, pages. Okay, since we won't have time to read the whole thing, right. why don't you tell people the website so that they know Yeah, this is all up on the website, nationalrubertyalliance.org. And uh, if you go up there on the front page and you go and... Uh, I, some of it's on the front page, and some of it you have to go down to Juris Documents and go down on the bottom, and you'll see on the bottom the latest response, I think, which was October 15th. I'll, yes, read, it it. Is. I'll read it on our next show. Yeah, right, but and, we've got and so <clears throat> basically we answered them, and we answered their newspeak and their, and their misquoting of the, of the New York Constitution that they, they, they're so good at. And, and we, we're waiting for that response now. Josh, you yes. want to say something? I want to ask you a question on behalf of the viewers. You know, the average person worth watching you is very much like my, like my son's friend, Douglas Fisher. He uh, presented a fraudulent credit card to the Best Buy, you know, at Best Buy. Mm -hmm. It was grabbed by their security. They sat on the young kid as after he tried to escape and they choked him to death accidentally. Now most people watching this show never get before the judge mm -hmm. or the jury. <coughs> they find that this, these so-called security guards and police officers mm -hmm. with search and fist are judge, jury, an executioner. Right. How does common law address this very brutal issue that faces many of the viewers and people in the streets of New York? Well, they I, never get to come to a jury or a judge. Right. Right. And then, under any conditions. Right. And yet, the security officers are judge jury and executioners. Well, that's a real easy one because clearly there's an injured party. And even they will recognize the level, I mean, let's, let's face it, somebody gets killed, it's, it's murder or manslaughter or whatever you want to call it, whatever the, the extent of the... Of the uh, Unless it's a police officer that does it and then they uh, find a way to cover it up. Right, and, and, and under, under common law, you should be able to address that. You, they should be able to go in and bring their case before a, a, a panel of grand jurists. And, you know, a grand jury when they investigate, they don't investigate with a full 25. They investigate with four people. So it's very doable. So you get, you get your four main people mm. in the county who are, are like administrators, your secretary, and, and uh, those administrators or the grand jury foreman. And you really don't have a foreman until you impanel a jury, and then they vote for who's a foreman. And, and we've done that. We've voted foreman, and who, whosoever's names are out there now are only out there because as a group, we put them up in the front. But that person doesn't necessarily stay in the front. It's it's decided by the group. So somebody like that, if there were, if the grand jury is set up to where they can actually investigate, and this person was able to come in front of them, they could call those guys in. They could look at all the evidence, and then they could decide whether or not to send a true bill, a presentment to to send it to a court. And uh, 
even those, even that petite jury needs to be run under common law. See, that's the point we're making. We're not just taking the grand jury. We want all juries to operate under common law. We want them to examine not only the the uh, uh, the the, the uh, incident or the statute of, of it in the strict sense, but in the in the spirit of the law and whether or not the law is being misapplied. You know what I mean? And and what those gray areas are because. That's the problem today. We have mandatory sentencing, mandatory this, mandatory, it's all about that machine. Pretty soon you don't need a judge, you don't even need a jury, you need an IBM card, you stick it in, this is a violation, what comes out? Right. Nobody needs to think, they used to, when I was on the town council, they, they said, well, well, how come you can do it? I said, listen, if you don't want me to give my opinion, you voted me because you like something about me, if you think I don't have a right to, to apply that, then I don't need to sit here, you just need a big computer that you can stick your problem in and it shoots the answer out. And we know how that works. Wow. You know, it's garbage in, garbage out. You know, you have to have human contact and, and, and human feelings and stuff on, on this. There's, you know, extenuating circumstances, I don't know. You know, even the police officer out in the street, he, he, the first thing is his discretion. Just because he sees something doesn't mean that he has to write that when he comes, listen, you're doing 80 miles an hour on the highway and he stops you and you've got a pregnant wife that's ready to deliver. Guess what? There's an exception to the law there. You know, you're operating under an emergency. You know, I mean, for him, and, and some of them will rip you out and turn you in handcuffs and the baby will be born on the ground because they're going <laughs> to, just they're going to uphold the statute. You know, and that's a problem. And that's where we are today. You know, and that's what's brought this movement up because the time is now. People have to say enough. And the only one who can fix it is the people. Now, we may end up in court. I don't know. I don't, I don't particularly want to go into their courts. And, but the, main, the first court that we're in is the court of public opinion. The only way this thing is going to go is if people all across the nation start bringing it back and we have all the documentation that, that show that it is lawful and legal and, and, and wholesome. And if they keep doing that, and we and we keep coming to our account, oh, we've established. Put your paperwork in. Do your voting. You know, get to, into your library or, or your churches and have the meeting, and get people to, to vote the process in, and then and then fill out, follow our methods of, of of announcing and recording with affidavits. These are all important things when you want to engage government you have to do things right in a, in a, You're in a not precise an anonymous way. informant that, that that won't stand behind serious allegations for right. example right so everything we have is basically plug and play you can just go in there follow the procedures set it up and i'll tell you don't worry about getting 25 or 125 or what how many people the main thing is to get it instituted put the end we've made it very easy every time we came up against a brick wall they were taking our notices out of the town halls and taking them off the walls and and they were and they were not letting us do we we even had a couple of of meetings to bring the grand jury in closed down because the town lawyer said oh they can't have that meeting after they gave us the room and they came in and who's the town lawyer he's not he doesn't have any 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 uh, uh, authority in the town you know what I mean they should have at least sent the town supervisor or somebody but nevertheless we have a right to assemble wow. how can they tell us that we can't have this meeting in their town hall so we, some places we did it in town halls and some places we did it in libraries and we went to Denny's and every other place. It doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is the people get together, they constitute it, they, 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 they verify it, and they send it to the county so that they know that they're there. And, and, and so that's the process and that's what people have to do. They have to get the process going and it's, it's like that movie. If you build it, they will come. Don't worry about 25 people because Right. You start it, and even if you only have eight or ten or five people at the meeting and they vote it and it's unanimous, because we put it in the newspapers, you know, we posted it all over. We, we said, now, listen, send it to the newspaper. And if they put it in, they put it in. If they don't put it in, well, that's their, that's their problem. I mean, that's even something the grand jury can go after when they have nothing else to do because there's so many other problems. Really, that newspaper is at fault. When you do a public announcement and they pull it out away from the people, they are also entering into that fraud. It's all in there. They right. all do the same thing. Right. So, so the corporation, the newspaper that pulls your ad, under that corporate charter, they can do it, but the corporate charter can't override free speech. Exactly, right? exactly. So now somebody's been violated here, his free speech. The, Rao Rampilla has a really big problem. 
and he told me briefly about it, I instantly saw I wanted to have him on his show so he could explain it. Can you explain what happened with your really important guest, probably one of the well, most important and hopeful? <laughs> well, you know, I am an actor, uh, so I had the good fortune of having uh, the writer and producer of The Simpsons. The writer and the producer of The Simpsons. On my show, and uh, I put it on YouTube, and I hardly have uh, 45 or 100 hits. 45 or 100 hits? Yeah, and that's so outrageous. Uh, Some people told me I didn't put, maybe haven't been doing social media thing. Did, did you put tag words, his name, yeah. creator of The Simpsons? Yeah. And when you put uh, the creator of The Simpsons... Well, I'm not a good social marketing social no, media No, no, but, e but even so, I mean, I knew hardly nothing when I got on YouTube, and uh, I'm approaching... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Uh, I had other shows that I had more uh, people... In, in the past, it. yeah, then, right. Then this one. Then. I'm, I'm sus the fraud that I'm suspecting here, and that's why I'm, I'm asking you. We were talking about in the previous show one lady's problem with black mold in Hudson County, and we were talking about getting a grand jury, possibly even from around the state, if they couldn't find 25 just within Hudson County. But now we have a case, and I'll, I'll explain in more detail what I suspect is going on with breaking links and the kind of piracy and theft of intellectual property on the internet. Um, how, how do you think that would be done? Maybe even just in the local county, you would, you would start to see that uh, your intellectual property is not really reaching the World Wide Web? Yeah, what, what I, I think all, all things start on a local level. Okay. You know, we have this mistake that we got to go up to the, to the Congress right. and the President. And, and really, the things sometimes you have to go up there but you know it's that you know it's Moses up on the mountain the thing if, if it affects everybody in the community eventually it'll make it up there but really it needs to be because it's not being handled down here we look up there and they're not being paying attention but really even with the grand jury you would start on a local level because you're going to get you're going to get your best results on the law. You know, what do you think what do you think the Congress is gonna do for you? They're gonna be yeah, they're gonna play politics. If you start on a local level, you can get real restitution. You can actually you can bring this thing into a court, which is just as serious on the local level as it is the federal level. They have the power to put people in jail and to and to make restitution. So that's where you would start it. You would start it with your local grand jury. If you think that they're that they're illegally you know, uh, um, censoring or doing, and that's an important point because the that's internet is, is, listen, this whole thing is depending on this public access. You're not going to get this kind of information on your managed news media. They're not going to do it. Who's paying them? The corporations, the same ones that are, that are, that are supplying our court system and stuff. <laughs> They're not going to, a house divided will fall. They're not going to fix themselves. They're not. It's up to the people. And so we have tools. Now listen, this is our tool. This is this is this is like a soldier's gun. You gotta keep it oiled and you can't let it get rusty. And the thing is is if mm -hmm. you let it lay there and get rained on, that's our fault. That's not their right. fault, that's our fault. Right. But but speaking of not letting the gun get rusty, our our weapons are our cameras. So when you first had this guest, he's he's actually the creator of the Simpsons, right? It's his intellectual property, it's a creation of his mind. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's it's, it's the my is producer, I mean, he is the head writer, uh -huh. and uh, he's the executive producer. So, uh, I don't know, he's, I mean, surprise, I don't know what, so what's, well, I don't want to pay money to promote my YouTube videos. Oh, of course not, of course I not. I don't know if I play, pay money. Then no, 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 no. Uh, but I was surprised, I, was, I thought maybe it is my fault, maybe I don't know what it is. No, how to come but how, how did you even get such an important guest? Well, you know, I'm a writer and a, mm -hmm. uh, a actor, and uh, I met with him at Dramatist Guild, which is uh, one time headed by Arthur Miller. Uh, so we, we have we have meetings there. I'm a member of that guild, so as as uh, same as uh, Screen Actors Guild. So I met with him, and then I met him on another occasion, some other place. So uh, I talked to him, would you be interested? He said, yeah, and we talked about Chakao, we talked about uh, everything, how uh, the, um, uh, every, all these characters came into being. So oh, I, I'm, I'm I was telling the inside story, right, basically. Right. No, I'm no, so... Nothing, not, nothing, nothing uh, 
uh, rebellious or anything, but something interesting. So no, no, uh, you know, you know, from an artistic point of view. Right. Do you know how powerful your guest was? That he, it, because if he wasn't as powerful as he was, his agent would have said, "You can't go on public access." That's what I'm saying. He he trusted you. No, yeah, he he's he's a good person. He, he told a lot of things. He's funny. Yeah, yeah, he no, I'm funny. sure he is. I mean, and then what happened when you tried to uh, to use the studios here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network? I heard there was a little problem with that because the other day that. I had the studios booked and Scott Stringer bumped me. Oh, well, I had originally booked at the uh, Harlem mm -hmm. in Kazakhstan, but uh, then somebody else has to do their show. So then I went and approached the uh, uh, person in charge, and uh, he graciously arranged it. I was, mine was the first show, first show that was done. Wonderful. In the I'm, so I'm, was, glad, I'm glad you got it because some other producers we haven't been as fortunate. I don't know how the federal funding goes, but I know public access should be for the public. And sadly, uh, we are not getting, we producers are the lowest man on the totem pole. A lot of you don't know out there. Uh, what sacrifice is made on the part of the public access producers, we get no money for this. The Time Warner has to give a certain amount of money for public access because of... They uh, collect uh, a dollar or something. Yeah, I mean, they'll, 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 they'll kind of <laughs> indicate if you want money. your cable bill to be lower, then uh, cut out public access. That's utter nonsense. If you want your cable bill to be lower, you need to support public access because Explain, I know you understand the court of public opinion and politics. Why, why, even though these are expensive studios, why is this cheap for what you're getting in return? Well, it's cheap because of the value. There's a value on it, and, 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 and it's, it's spontaneous, and it's of the people. So, uh, obviously, there's a value perceived by the people. Now, you know, whether or not, you know, the problem is, is if it's not, if they can't control it right down to the nth degree, that's a problem for them. So, you know, um, but bringing this in, you see, whenever we perceive a problem, whenever the government or somebody sees a problem, usually it's, it's smoke and mirrors. They're afraid of their own shadow. A lot of times good things come out. They see something, oh, we can't do that because there'll be chaos. You know, we need control. And, the, and you know, we have a video on our site that's very interesting, and, and it, it shows in England on these very busy streets, they turned off all the traffic lights and, and let people just, and I mean, you know how they drive over there with the little cars in and out and stuff, and they, and they announced it first for a period of time, and then they shut it down, and everybody had to like either give way or not give way. It's, it's it was like a symphony. They said, oh, there's gonna be crashes. There was a, a person who used to walk, and it took her 20 minutes to get from her job to get to home because she couldn't get across the streets with the cars, and this is with the traffic lights. They cut the traffic lights out. Everybody just kind of did, you know, they'd hesitate, and then three cars would go, and then, and then one would go, and, you know, and it looked like blood going through the veins of a body. Wow. It was a symphony. And the lady said, it only took me five minutes to walk because the traffic was, nobody was waiting for a light with nobody going by. You know, you sit there and we, we're, and they said, you're always looking at that light. And everyone, vroom, vroom, vroom. And when the light changes, they're hitting the gas. They're not worried about there's a kid in the street. That's incredible. You see, because now they got their focus on this light and we're driving like robots. Where if they left wow. us to our own devices, people are actually more polite than you think they are. Right, And right. the little girl says, you know, I got across the street easier, she said, because the people aren't looking at the light gun in They're their looking motor. At me. They're looking at me and they said, Oh, that poor little girl's trying to get across. Maybe <laughs> I'll stop. And get yeah, well, there's an idea an idea That's whose time great. has come, is it not? Yeah. So and there's there's examples of this all over the world. You know, when there was another so place that so I don't the government closed down for a long, an extended period of time. Do you know the prosperity in that little country went <laughs> up? Everybody was making money, right. with, you know? So right. that's that's the same thing with this. There's spinoffs here yeah, that we yeah. don't even imagine right. what could be good for the community. But, you know, do the powers that be see that? You know, does it fit into their corporate, you right. know, thing? Uh, hold that thought. I don't want to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. Joe, can you... Can may, you I, may I reflect uh, something? Okay, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'm not authority on the grand jury, um, but... Uh, 
I'm from India. Mm -hmm. so before British invaded India and set up their system there, uh, we used to have grammar panchayats, village panchayats. So the elders. What are they called? Village panchayats. Uh, in Punch? Indian, panchayat means. Uh, panchayat. Like, like your jury. Mm -hmm. so A the jury? elders oh, of the panchayat. village sit down and oh. the people bring their disputes, and uh, that's how the uh, justice system worked before. There may be fitfalls, but uh, uh, it's got similarity. Uh, the the Jew, it's panchayat. common, common law yeah. from common the people, law, common. right? Panchayat. And so how many I'm, sat in a village? Uh, in a panchayat? I'm not sure, but uh, it's the people that are wiser and the elderly and all those people sat down. People bring their disputes, uh, just like in the olden days, you go to King Solomon's court. Right. And, uh, those, those, that kind of stuff. Right, right. And uh, I also worked with Native Americans in this country. They have peacemakers' court. So, uh, elders. Uh, so this idea of, uh, I don't know what exactly, <laughs> your problem with the government, but it is not without any precedent in uh, other, yeah. uh, other countries. And, uh, Absolutely. Other right, right. Right. That's all I want to I, say. I just want to say, when you were talking about the traffic lights, that's a mind blower. I'd like to see that video because, Joe, when you were organizing for big concerts, you said the police, can you explain? Well, that impressed when, me. I was, when I was organizing uh, Woodstock Free Festivals, and Freedom Fest, um, the police wanted to know what we wanted to do if we wanted police. And I said, I told them, no, we don't want any police on the site. Only come if we call you. And we set it up so we, we would get on the microphone and we would tell the people, look, we have no police here. We don't have a bunch of security to bully you and herd you like cattle. So you have to police yourself. If your friend is getting out of line, straighten your friend out and tell him to knock it off. And we had no problems. The people policed themselves. Imagine that. All the garbage got picked up <laughs> right. and you know what I mean? Yeah. Everybody got along fine and we didn't need any police. We didn't have any arrests. We didn't have any bullies, uh, securities to herd them this way or herd them that way. And everybody got along fine. <laughs> but Joe right. told a little white lie there. It's what? funny. Tell, today, tell people how you got people to I pick up the cigarette butts. That. <laughs> that, that is a trip. <laughs> Listen to this. Well, th that actually happened at the first Rainbow Family gathering. You know, we wanted them to clean up. And uh, so I said, and even pick up the cigarette butts, because, you know, the birds eat the cigarette butts and they choke on them. So they went around and picked up every little cigarette butt, but the birds no. don't eat cigarettes. But they pick them up, <laughs> they spit them right out. But he out. heard years later people swearing that, that birds today. choke on cigarettes. <laughs> and, and he started. Yeah, I started rumor that I've heard many, many times, years and years later. It was, <laughs> that was your rumor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's a good rumor because you know what? A cigarette butt is synthetic. Right. And it never rots. Right. It sits there and it doesn't biodegrade and they're right. horrible. You can't, you flush them in the toilet if you got a septic system, it'll clog it up eventually. Right. <laughs> wow. Josh, you wanted to no, say something? No, I was discussing, not today, with the students at John Jay. Uh, I suggested they do away with the security at John Jay. <laughs> and I told them I went to City College in 57. We had a lot of veterans from the Second World War and we had veterans from Korea. So if there was ever a security problem, like a mugger, they would disappear. You know? Right. <laughs> and we never had security. Now I, I said here at John Jay, you have security all over the place, giving you permission to come and to go and go to go through the turnstile. It's very annoying, to well, say the least. Well, you know what? Liberty takes maturity. Yeah. You have to be mature. You can't. See, they've trained everybody to ask mommy and daddy, and mommy and daddy's the government, and we have to ask permission all the time. Well, right. you know what? We're the government. You know, G get that out of your heads that the government is mommy and daddy. We're the government, you know, and we contracted, we the people, right. we contracted them to do a job. And the, jo the main job they should be doing is protecting our rights. You know, when right. Congress said, them. when they said that, 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 that Congress had the right to regulate commercial activities between the state, what they, what it re they, they call it regulate, but really it was to make regular. In other words, they, they, Congress's job 
was Important. to make sure that that if you if you lived in Wyoming and you were doing a business with somebody in New Jersey and and you wanted to ship your widgets to him that every state in between didn't either outlaw your widgets or put a heavy tariff on them so Congress's job was to make commerce regular between the states which means to remove barriers it doesn't mean to come down and basically that's what we've got turned around now we have regulation and I saw a show years ago I was a kid and I remember it to this day and it was a show when 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 Russia was really getting bad and they were going downhill because of their policies they took a truck and they started it I don't know if it was New York or New Jersey, and they started one in, in Moscow, and they put stuff on the truck, and they documented the trip across the nation. And, and in Russia, every time you went to a different province, you got stopped, and you waited, and you waited for a guard to come out, open the load up, check the load, close it, put the seal on. Sometimes, he was, sometimes they made him wait eight hours because the guy went off, of, you know? So their, their truck... Sometimes they're waiting for bribes. Or, that's right. And so what happens is, our truck got to California in however many days it takes to drive to California, and their truck's still going three months later. So how could you put, what happens to your goods? Perishable. Look, right. what, what happens to the price even if it's not perishable? That cost has is, is got to be figured in to that. You're paying those two guys in a truck for a month and a half or two months. My, my partner Buck and I got across country in 57 hours. We didn't really intend that, but I would drive while he would sleep. And right. So if you had two... You wouldn't you do that there. over there because you, you, there's yeah. so many stops you have to go through right. to have everything now, checked. Now this is important in Rao's case because now we're talking about internet traffic. There's going to be... You, you, I'm sure there's going to be talk just like regulating marijuana. We're against licensing people to smoke marijuana because what you're doing is you're registering with an entity with uh, we feel has no right to to, well, to claim that something that's lawful that the bible says take the herb and use it to purify the blood it belongs to everybody any herbs, well when they legalize plants. it they don't make it lawful i mean right they they stigmatize you they fingerprint you right. if you if you if you have any kind of guns or anything they make you get so they're treating you like you're some kind of a a, a lower section right. of society like that, you're doing something wrong right and, and we can't instead have instead of standing up right. for your rights but now in the case it's so that you know, that's a type of regulation that then winds up really in the hands again of a monopoly in the case of Rao he's got a message an important message you know for people around the world to know what is the actual thinking of the creator of something that's uh, is so inspiring how does he get his traffic from one part of the world to an, to another when regulation you know on the internet is going to be all about taxing and and eventually people won't get the message like in china they don't even they use a term called bail in i never heard it and joe said oh he's just chinese he's he's not speaking the correct english no joe he's not they talking about it all the time in china the bail in and uh, and and my concern against again is um discrimination that just as the jews were were wrongly accused of, of of certain wrongs so now are the chinese going to be accused of 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 the toxic mortgages they're kind of holding a gun to the chinese heads saying that you have to do the bail in so how how could we regulate or how can we address well, you the can't really call youtube and talk to them no, Google won't see YouTube. You can't. Yeah, you can't. You, you I can't could. go to the U Google office to talk to YouTube unless you have an appointment, and you can't get an appointment because uh, you can't call. You have to call them. If, even if you find and call them, the you have to know the number, a particular right. person. How right. would you know a particular person if you don't know anything? But they won't put you through. Right. So basically, you're blocked. I don't know how right. this system. And works. I'm suspecting that YouTube got the bandwidth that it did at the beginning, saying that they would give free speech. Right. That's because I always wonder who gets all the bandwidth at the beginning. So if if your free speech in any way has been restricted, I believe a grand jury and and a real a real court would 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 just take away whoever's running YouTube because he's been defrauded. His free speech has been uh, has been violated. I, I I know you didn't think it would get to all of this. You just wanted more than forty five hits for the creator of The Simpsons. Oh, well, I. But you're down the rabbit hole now, Rao. <laughs> Welcome See, I to don't the show. 
Well, uh, there's something I wanted to reflect on what uh, mm -hmm. they were talking about, this security. You know, uh, after 9-11, I felt good when I see all the police around me. Uh, that was all good. But, you know, I'm from India. Uh, we go meet anyone, talk to anyone. We don't need an appointment, but here you make appointments. But when I came for a long time ago, you know, 83, until 9-11, I can, when I was looking for a job, uh, I can go in and throw my, put my resume, right. go to the people. Now I can't go into the buildings. I can't go anywhere. I can't even go into the city hall. I mean, I used to go to the city hall and watch. Now I can't go freely into the city hall. That's a public uh, forum. In all, every, every building, every really? place, the it's city, all, the city? it's all, yeah, you can't go into why, the city hall. Why would you want to go into the city hall? Well, it's, it's a people's uh, assembly. Uh, any person who is uh, wanted to see it, should be able to see that's my uh, freedom. Oh, uh, I, don't, I, I don't understand. You just wanted to sightsee? Not sightseeing. I just want to know what is happening. That is, because I did, a, we didn't go to the city hall when we got there. That is not secret chambers. Uh, right. uh, some secret discourses mm. are going right. away from the. That is for public. Secret rubrics. So, <laughs> so it should be yeah. open to the public. So Josh, you're wagging your head. What? Yeah, what mean, about I city met, hall? I met Chris Brock there on the steps of city hall. You know, I uh, had come from. Uh, you know, from some personal uh, errand, and uh, City Hall Park was open, and uh, some young woman walks over to me and says, "Who will you uh, talk to my young producer about who you voted for in a primary? And that was the primary between Giuliani, uh, Ruth Messenger, and Al Sharpton. I said, yeah. I said, yeah, I'll speak to the young man. So uh, Chris Rock came over. I didn't know it was Chris Rock. He said, who did you vote for? I said, Al Sharpton. He said, no, you didn't. He said, I'm a black guy. You're telling me that you voted for Al Sharpton because I'm a black guy. I said, many white people voted for Al Sharpton. He said, yeah, you and two others. <laughs> you know? So anyway, when he finished, they had me sign a release, and I said, who is this young student? They said, well, he has a show on HBO. That's anyway, Rock, but that place was open to everyone. There were uh, American Indians sitting on the steps, hippies, I think even a few people maybe smoking a few of joints or something, but it was, it was really a lot of fun. You know who, who, where, who, who to whom all these public offices are open? Yeah. In the Congress, in yeah. the Senate, the lobbyists. And yeah, the people that are uh, hired by these uh, business people. Any public citizen should be able to go yeah. and talk to the, the senator or congressman or a city councilman directly not to be influenced by few hired guns. I mean, they don't have no security problem. They will see her pass, they know them, they go through, you know. It, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, they, you have to balance security uh, with the people's right to uh, address their grievances. The right. access. It's the access. You know. Right. And, and it changed. It changed a lot. And they, now every, they're using this 9-11 uh, uh, incident just to As an excuse. privatize right. the public forums, right. which right. I really don't appreciate. And I think it's a violation of the First Amendment. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. You know, I never even thought about New York City Hall, because when we were getting married, we went into the Supreme Court. And we went into the Supreme Court. Yeah. We go through security, and Joe had his his Marlboro cigarettes. And <laughs> the guy opens it up, and he sees a joint in there, you know, a little bit of marijuana. And he goes, "Oh, um, how, how?" He goes, "What are you doing here? How do you right, say?" He, he 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 was holding the pack with the joints. There was two joints in it. He was holding the pack with the joints in it. He said, "What are you doing here?" And I said, "Me me and Paula came to get married." And when he heard that. <laughs> He said, and you're turning this in. You found it on the street, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and then he took it, and I said, yeah, that's what I'm doing. I found it, and I'm turning it in. <laughs> but it was funny, because the cop took the cigarettes, and he put them in the garbage, but he put them, like, right on top. 
<laughs> and I'm sure as soon as we walked away, he snatched them joints up. <laughs> but, but the point is, usually you get married in City Hall, so I realized when you said that, I thought, wow, I haven't even thought about New York City Hall. But in Kingston, we accidentally stumbled on in the Kingston City Hall, which was beautiful, beautiful building, and inside, you know, they had the rails and the nice, it was just gorgeous. It was a public a service, a public utilities hearing, commission hearing, for selling Central Hudson, for selling the electric company to Fortis of Canada, which is a Canadian corporation. And it, it, it turned out to be one of three public hearings, s secret public hearings. You think, well, how can it, you can have a public hearing that's secret? Well, like, how can you have a Manhattan Neighborhood Network a public meeting pu that's secret? The same thing, you know, we, we're seeing on law, on paper, they say they're supposed to have public meetings, but the public's not invited. So in Kingston... And not even I, that. The public is, uh, they try to push them away. They try to push you away. And even the producers, we had, but we did get into Manhattan Neighborhood Network's uh, public meeting, but it was hard to find out. Only because we were persistent. Yeah, we were persistent. But um, that, when I got that footage of this of this hearing of the public and nobody spoke in favor of selling the electric company and the, I heard there were two other hearings and nobody spoke in favor because anybody who would I'm sure would be lynched afterwards because the implications of not owning your own utilities is is like enormous that that file I tried so desperately hard to send down to m and until finally I even I, I have one show and behind me on the green screen I got a do not reply folder from Manhattan Neighborhood Network. And, and if that isn't a violation of free speech, I don't know what is. So when you say that you're offended that you can't get into the New York City Hall, that makes me want to go racing right down to the New York oh, City Hall. You would try to go in there. They, they won't let they me won't in. They won't let me in. Well, I'll get as far I as used I to go, we used to. I used to go there for, uh, openly. There were days I used to, before 9-11. I used to go there. Everyone used to go, able to go there. But and why, then, you, so why would you go? Why would you go there? I was just curious. Just it, it was just beautiful, and I mean, I love the Supreme Court. Well, I, I, I don't know what is happening. What they're doing? I'm paying taxes. Oh, so the he like, wants to be a grand. You got to join the grand jury, remember? And they can't. Yeah, you got to. You got to. You got to. What? Refuse. Yeah, I have every right to know what's going on there. <laughs> Become a grand juror. You a grand jury. Did you read what? He's thinking it's secret. William said. William said that they don't even have to divulge what they're asking, looking for it. Right. That they can. They can go in and ask questions anywhere. I'm sure that strikes terror in somebody's right. hearts. But you know, in Orange you say County, Williams, the court case Williams, right? The court right. case Williams, yeah. The e ruling. Explain that for this show, because you explained it for the last show, and I'd like Rao to know about U.S. Well, uh, versus Williams. Yeah, the U.S. versus Williams was a was a case that Scalia wrote the uh, the winning de opinion on, and what he did in that case is he he put in there the functions of the grand jury. I, I mean, he really, he really gave the people the direction of, of, of what this, this uh, time-honored thing was and how to do it. But he, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, that but surprised I... surprised Scalia did it. <laughs> yes, yeah. Scalia. Uh, does Scalia that, did does it. that surprise you, Josh? Scalia, he was the one that went after Nixon. Does that surprise you? Scalia wrote. Well, he About didn't go after Nixon. He was one of the one of the judges that ruled on the Nixon. But that's case. how they got Nixon in there was with the grand jury. There must have been some reason. Right. Why would they open this up? Because Gerard was telling me the committee man is something that you work with in order to get elections done. So it seems as though our Constitution was sort of manipulated from the early 1900s. Right. So what this Scalia case brings it up again? It. it you know, it, he's opened up a Pandora's box. Right, exactly. It, it, either, either Scalia is wrong, or we better find out what Nixon, I believe he was trying to bring the gold standard back, or did. Somehow he had enemies that they would, that they would give a Supreme Court ruling so favorable to the grand jury. And these guys found it. I just have a question, may I? Yes, mm -hmm. please. Um, um, I, I fully do not understand the nature of your movement, but the uh, thing I wanted to know is know, right? if, um, if this is uh, like a, a vigilante kind of thing, mm -hmm. watch over what's really uh, the community watching mm -hmm. over, uh, because you have a 
particular legal system set up in this right, country. Right, right. You know, uh, uh, this is more uh, an out, uh, out, out, outshoot of the uh, system, or is it like no, this is a, is very a political moment? This yeah. has been yeah, yeah, yeah. in our heritage for since the beginning. And it, and, it, and it has its roots in the Magna Carta, which was 1215. And then it, it, it's worked its way down through common law. And, and this is, this, when, when, when Scalia wrote this, he didn't put his opinion in. Every time he put a line in here, you'll notice that he, he cites Supreme Court rulings that uphold this. So he didn't just sit there. See, judges are not allowed to give their opinion. They have, when you ask them by what authority, they have to show in the law how they ruled. because. The law is the law, and we can't change it. Just like they're saying, well, the, the legislator got rid of that. You can't do that. You know, there's inalienable rights, and that's written in the Constitution. And the only way we can change any of that is if all the people vote. And even, uh, and even if all the people vote, there's certain things that can't be changed. You can't change my inalienable rights. You can't make murder legal. Because right. that that violates a basic tenet of the of a, of the human existence. So what 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 Scalia did is he went back through all the court cases and he showed where they upheld this because they always had grand juries, and and he says in fact the whole theory of its function is that it belongs to no branch of the institutional government, serving as kind of a buffer or referee between the government and the people. And then he quotes all kinds of laws. G. Edwards, the grand jury, although the grand jury normally operates, of course, in the courthouse under judicial auspices, its institution, institutional relationship with the judicial branch has traditionally been, so to speak, at arm's length. Judges' direct involvement in the functioning of the grand jury has generally been confined to the constitutive one of calling jurors together and administering their oaths of office. Anyway, he goes down through here and he, and he says here, the grand jury's functional independence from the judicial branch is evident in both the scope of its power to investigate criminal wrongdoing and in the manner in which that power is exercised, unlike a court whose jurisdiction is predicated upon a specific case or controversy, the grand jury can investigate merely on the suspicion that the law is being violated, or even because it wants assurance that it is not. And look at all these cases that say that. Blah, 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 United States, there are enterprises, 111 Connecticut, quoting United States versus Morton Salt. So this is not Scalia's words, real, Scalia's words, but what he's doing is he's giving you the, the case law so that backs not, this up. It's not vigilante. It's not vigilante Rao, by any. Rao was <coughs> indicating that it's something outside the system. In our, our last, in our our last minute, set up, we have one minute, Chuck. Okay, our system was set up that we the people gave power to the government. So we the people had the right to have a jury to take, if a politician is corrupt, we the people could have a jury to say we want him out. But go ahead, it's time to See, no, no, the American exper experiment is that we're all kings. See, that's, they want to kill, they want to make sovereignty a bad word. A sovereign is a king. And so the American experiment is that all the people got all the rights of the king. Now my kingdom stops where you begin. I step on your toe, now we have an injured party, you. So sovereign against sovereign, we can, we can, we can impanel a group of other sovereigns to rule on that. This country was designed that way because they were sick of what's going on in this country so now. So thank you for joining me. I'm Paula Gloria, and we're going to be having many, many more shows with Gerard, and we're going to be following the progress of the grand jury throughout, uh, throughout New York, and this is also uh, an awakening, I would say, right, that's happening throughout the yes, world. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the country, mm -hmm. and then the world, too, because China's hearing about it. And, and when we got this country, it was, we were supposed to improve it. This is the improvement here. This is where they fell down, because, the, because this was never, it should have been put up and never gone away. Right. It should have been improved. It, it should have been, been stronger. hidden. Right. In other words, we're okay. out, we're out now. Next show, we'll set up, mm -hmm. change the DVD. And do it yourself self determination. And, um, right. Okay. I want out on this one. Really? I said, is Lydia back? No, she's not. If Lydia's not.